All right, welcome to the video. Welcome to the video. It's good to have a new haircut. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the haircut. Thumb it down if you don't. Stylish. This is a 10-year-old top with a few moth holes in it. We've got a question here. Not a question. We've got a, one of the nicest emails I've ever had. And it is... Let me read it over here. We got This was from Dean. And... Uh, Watched your channel daily back from 2013, 2016. During that time, I picked up pretty much all your tips, topics, and basically learned everything. Now, I, nowadays, I just check back on your channel every couple of months, not really for the tips, because I think I know them all, but because I want to see how you're doing personally and just make sure you're still doing everything you love. Um, some of the most valuable lessons I've learned from your channel were not the vegan tips. It's seeing how you bounce back from various situations. Uh, over the last five, six years, I've seen people use your name for views, popularity, twist your words to badmouth you, uh, blow things you said out of proportion to purposely defame you, mentor countless young guys, you've mentored countless young guys on health, lifestyle, only to have them stab you in the back a couple years later down the line. People who claim to be your friend while passively, aggressively badmouthing you. Uh, weaponize a difference of opinion in order to create drama and hate against you, bash your character when you're only trying to do good for the planet, have popular figures in the vegan community turn aggressively against you so they could make themselves feel relevant, go through a 10-year relationship breakup, go through a 10-year relationship breakup, do what all guys do after going through such a breakup, then make you out to be some sort of devil, having to deal with a bunch of fake friends who just want to stand next to you so they can seem popular, having to deal with grown-up men so obsessed with you they make entire YouTube documentaries dedicated to attacking your name. Um, this Dean has been paying attention. Dean's been paying attention, and I have to agree with Dean on this for sure. On the topic of various young guys backstabbing you, it was if it was me, I don't think I would be able to trust another person ever again. I can only think how hard it is when you start to take a chance on some unknown person only to, and slept, slowly let them in your life, become mates, give them your trust, then have them get the knives out and put one in your back. Today, months late, I see the physical attack you were a victim of in the street regarding in January when that coward attacked me from behind. Seeing that made me sick, which prompted me to make, write this email. Fuck that guy, seriously. But looking at your channel, you're still writing your back, still spreading the message of veganism, etc. I also watched you slander people online, except it turned out it was actually 100% true. One example you called out, I won't mention his name, but he called out such and such back in the day. At the time, those vids just looked like a bit of bad mouthing. But look at the disgrace he is now. Look where he is. Look what he's eating. Look at his dead following. You were right all along. Look where you are. Riding your bike, dating hot chicks, and getting it fucking done. I want to say thank you for getting back up after every setback, every passive aggressive attack, every slander, even physically attacked, you stood back up to see that you do that fills me with inspiration and emotion. Whenever life throws something at me, I can look to your channel and learn from all the ugly situations you have faced. Never stop being Durant Rider. Just a pic of me and my mum, so you know this is whose mail is uh, mail is from. My mum's 77 and the pic turned vegan. In the early days, all her friends were talking about banting which is a low-carb Tim Noakes thing. Um, and <laughs> I remember that video you did of Tim Noakes saying, if you eat my green list food, you won't be diabetic. And then in the next clip, I follow the truth for myself because I am diabetic. Haha, <laughs> so classic. Thank you very much, Dean. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is why I do what I do, you know, to educate and inspire young men and women, any, well, anyone of any age, but generally my audience is targeted at probably 15 to 25 year old men who are trying to find their place in the world. What a great, you know, what a great email to get. And, uh, you know, that's, this, this guy gets it. And this is what I do what I do just to show people. YouTube isn't just about, you know, making spider videos or prank videos or hot babe videos or, or, you know, drama or whatever. This is about life education. And that's my goal. Cause when I was, you know, starting up when I was 15 to 25, what role models did I really have? You know, I mean, I had some good ones, but they weren't like with me every single day. It wasn't like a jump on a on my phone and be in bed and watch a video or learn some tips or whatever. It was very just learn it as you go it sort of thing. But these days, the speed information is so amazing, and so this is why I do what I do. 
And uh, end of the day, all my problems are first world problems, you know? You, see, I mean, you can type my name into Google and you'll see all the obsessed, psychopathic sociopaths just trying to get some fame off my name or whatever. And they're like, at the end of their three hour article you read, it's like, donate to my crypto, give me some money. You're like, I don't have a job, I'm trying to get some fame off Drew Rider, give me some money for a bit of bread, please. And it's just like, you just have to laugh at it and uh, and feel sorry for people like that. Right? You have people in your life who will try and fuck you over or screw you over or whatever or try and be me, 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 me. And these people are obsessed with you because, you know, for many reasons. Probably the, one of the main reasons, if we talk about some of my haters, um, just jealousy. Just straight out jealousy. How many haters have you seen over the years of me today in 2020 who are living the lifestyle they really want to live? Super fit, in shape, hot chick or hot guy, whatever they're into, you know, living their dream. Zero. And so this has come from a place of jealousy. So when people would get onto your back about whatever in life, maybe it's your boss or it's blah, 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 you know, maybe it's my stalker. He goes, oh, you're doing not a friend, but everyone sends you 10 emails a night. It's just coming from a place of like, their, their life, they're hurting, man. They're really hurting in life. So we can't have too much, oh, what's the word? We can't really have any hate towards them because they're in a place of pain. Hurt people try and hurt other people. Huh? Watch the videos people make about me, the neg ones, you yeah? know? And look at their faces, look at the anger and the, the prematurely aged bitterness of the face. Right? It's not, we're not talking wrinkles or whatever. We're talking like there's that bitterness in a face. Right? Everyone gets older, but how you age, do you age as a happy looking person or do you age as a, a bitter lizard? <laughs> You know, like a, an angry goanna or whatever. And so you can do all the Botox and steroids or whatever you want in your life to try and change your face or angles or use pictures from 10 years ago or whatever. But nothing will change until you change your thoughts. You know? And so if you have Hank towards someone, and this, this the photo of this guy, he looks fantastic. He looks, he's just glowing. This guy's glowing with gratitude. He's just like living light. You know, and he he's not afraid to, to tell someone, hey, I appreciate you, man. I've got grat gratitude for you. This guy who wrote me this email, Dean, he's he's also a YouTuber. He's got a pretty good following as well. He is got a glow to him, you know, a glow. Right? And these people that have glow, you know, they grow into into incredible human beings, and they they help other people grow as well and glow. So this is a little video, uh, you know, one of the nicest emails I've ever had, and it's this guy's paying attention. This guy's paying attention, and he, he's very mature uh, to see to see what's been going on all the time. And uh, yeah, what else can we say? It's it's a funny world out there. We've got some motorbikes in the background. So to wrap up the video, we're gonna have people in life. The more people who love you, right? You're gonna have the obsessed haters, man. Right? The, you can't. People. We got Jenna Marbles right now. We have got Shane Dawson and um, some YouTubers. Who are going through a bit of a period right now where they're getting hate, um, and I don't, I don't think it's justified personally. I think that Jenna Marbles, she's a comedian, she's a trial, she's having fun, and, and the SJW are people just trying to take anyone down. They're like, it's Jenna Marbles, and look for some cracks and try and bring her down. So Jenna Marbles is cracking over the haters, and Jenna, if you're watching, mate, don't worry about the haters. You know, this is part of the territory. But people like Jenna, who are viral, mad, mad viral on the YouTube's on social media, they get they. they you get so much approval. If you get a lot of hate with that, then they just, you know, it cracks. So if you're living for approval, then you're gonna die by rejection. Right? So everybody out there wants to be feel love. That's just a human innate thing. You want to be loved by your mom, your dad, your family, your cousin, blah, 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 blah. and when people reject you, it's like, oh, you know. And so that's just part of life, though. Not everyone's gonna love you, man. You know. And the more people, the more people, some people love you. The more other people want to hate you because they're jealous of you getting the love or you've got good looks or you've got length and girth or a hot chick or money or fame or fitness or you drive a Bentley or whatever, you know? Some people are going to love all those things and other people will be here be like, he's got that, I don't like him, you know? Part of the deal, man, part of the deal. So if you, if you rule your life based on the haters who are jealous and insecure or just want someone to hate because they're feeling left out, lonely, if you, you know, live for them in fear or whatever, then you miss out on all the goodness, right? And so that, that you could be, yeah, the, the hater could be your dad, 
The hater could be your mum. The hater could be the, the dude at work, right? Could, could be anyone, could be the bus driver. Like, if, if you can't handle that, if you can't handle a, a Brenda in the office, or, a, a, you know, a Francis as the bus driver, or whatever, you know? <laughs> if you can't handle these people, how are you going to get on in life? How are you going to get on in life? Right? So this, this is a two-part video. The first part was that endearing email of a person who gets it. And the second part is just a lesson in life that if you look at my trials and tribulations over the years, if people say, do and I does this, do and I does that, he did this, yeah, yeah, yeah. No police reports, nothing or whatever. Just people just trying to clout chase and whatever. And that's a part of the deal. You can't, I can't have 300 million views on YouTube on my channel, combine that with other hundreds of millions of views from other people's content. I can't have all that, all that fame on the internet without people saying, yeah, this is cool, and a small minority of vocal people trying to clout chase off that. You can't have that, right? So Jenna Marbles doing these videos makes millions of people laugh, and a small little sour bunch hate that. She's not getting it, right? She's not getting it. So whatever you do in life, if you're making your customers at work really happy, one of your workmates is going to see that and go, well, now you make me look bad, so I'm going to give you a hard day. And so if you live for those people, those people are always going to be around. So you can change jobs, you can change bus jobs, you can change part, blah, 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 blah. But these people always will turn up somewhere in your life. So if you can't maintain the frame, your frame, if you let their frame control your frame, then you lose. And it's just going to happen again and again and again. Until one day you say, I control the frame. Whatever happens, boom, I control the frame. Uh, that's what I do. I always control the frame. I always spin it so I win it. Every time. It's taken me a long time to get there, and the higher I get in that frame control, the greater the challenge gets. Okay, Drew and I, you pass level one. Let's go level two. Let's go level 2.1, level 2.2. And it's just boom, boom, boom. Frame control, climbing, fitness. Okay, you can do Norton Summit in 10 minutes, or so 20 minutes. Let's go to 19. Let's go to 18. That's just how it is in life. So if you can't get past the boss on level one, you never get to level two. All right? So what people do is they play this computer game of life where they get to level one boss and then like, I can't do this, this game sucks, I'm going to pick up another game. And they're playing that, this is pretty cool, and then the level one boss in that game turns up. Oh no, you know, drop that, got another one. The level one boss is always going to follow you everywhere you go. It's going to be the psycho girlfriend, the psycho boyfriend, the psycho stalker on the internet, or psycho neighbor, or whatever. These are little level one bosses and you got to keep going past. And you don't... It's not about bashing those people up or whatever. It's just about breathing in, breathing it out. Next, what's the lesson to learn from this? Okay, some people are really damaged. I can avoid those people in future. Or I can manage them better. Manage my reaction and behavior around them. You know? It's just a dealing with it. I've got a feral, another feral cat in my yard this week. It's a tomcat. He's still got his little nuts intact. So he's got a lot of power. He's, he's a brawly little puss. And I've got good experience of dealing with the feral pussy now. <laughs> of all times. So... When I seen this cat, you know, I can handle him a lot better. I've got a little scratch, pretty minor, but I didn't take it personally, and I can manage cats better. If you got me to do this two years ago, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be like, oh, this is a cat, my lounge room, what do I do, you know? And so it's just, you, you, you level up in life. You level up in life. So this is what I see on social media. People want the fame. They want the fame, man. They want the hot boyfriend or the hot girlfriend or the, the fitness or this or that or the Ferrari, but they don't know how to handle it, right? They, don't, they think that's going to make them happy or whatever. And they won't ever, man. Look at Shane Dawson. Look at Shane Dawson. Look, he's a massive YouTuber, multi-millionaire. You know? And look how depressed and sad he looks in his latest videos. Even he admits he's like addicted to pharmaceutical prescriptions, etc. Right? So if you think fame and money or looks or whatever will give you happiness, you are so, sorely mistaken, my friends. Sorely mistaken. Happiness comes from within. And happiness is best shared. And when you go out there every day, you want to help people or help animals or whatever, help the environment, pick up plastic or recycle or just do little things, little things that make you feel better. That's where life's really lived. And I can tell, I can honestly say, man, it does the fame and the, all that, it, it doesn't mean much. I mean, it's like, it's fantastic. I've, it's fantastic that I've got you know, hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. Every day on the street or supermarket, someone spots me and they say, hey, or they, or they're like, What's it doing? Like, oh, you know, or well, maybe they don't like you. They're like, you know, you know, you know that they know you, and you know that they're not really a fan, and that's cool. They, they probably watch the videos that not leave a comment. You know, so it's part of the deal. It's part of the deal. So it's uh, you know, 
it's just it's a, a wild west out there and hey man it's first world problems look what's going on in africa right now like rwanda sudan yemen korea like north korea like it's crazy These kids are dying from starvation and we've got these SJWs, like, you know, making fun of Jenna Marbles' old videos. It's like, oh, come on, man. We've got bigger things in the... We've got bigger... Vegan hash browns to fry than that, don't we? You know. But anyway, don't take it personally. It's it's just part of the deal. It's uh, part of success is having haters, man. That's just how it is. And haters are, like, the, your best teachers. They teach you deep. I didn't get to this level of emotional frame control, emotional happiness and joy because my life was easy every single day. All right? I was on the street age 17, you know? And the age is on the street age 17. Now being on the street in Australia age 17 isn't the same as being on the street in Kenya at age 17. We got it easy in Australia, it's all good. We'll look after you, you know? So there's one thing I'm, I'm strongly a believer of is, is not being a victim of life, it's being a champion. Whatever happens to you, you flip it so you win it every single fucking time, all right? And that's, that's my biggest take home out there. Spin it to win it every time. And it's not about getting one up on someone or whatever. It's just about understanding that life's very short and you're here to do good to help the planet, to be a steward of the planet. Right? You're not here to be controlled by some fuckwit at work or, or some fuckwit troll who hates their own life and who's jealous or whatever. Right? We've got to have love for these people. These people are very hurt. And if you don't believe me, just watch any of the videos the haters have made. Just type in Duran Rido, you know, whatever. Just type in Duran Rido. See, see what hate sort of comes up. And look at the eyes of these people, right? Look at the, the viciousness or the depression and the anxiety in these people's eyes. Uh, and if you prefer reading, just type in Duran Rido or Harley Johnston and, and just have a scroll around trying to find one of the hate blogs or hate websites about me. And look at the, the bitterness in their word or how passionately they write about me. Like article after article, links and tabs and grammar. And it's like, it's professional, man. It's professional as fuck. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Like that level of like bitterness. Imagine that. Imagine like spending 10 hours in a day writing an article about someone. Yeah. And then doing that again in a month's time. And again, doing it for like nine years or whatever. Like that's some serious level of obsession. And that's what I go through. But it's, who cares? If you know, here's, here's, here's the bottom line. If you notice haters, if you notice the SJWs or the blue dyed haired people or the whatever, you know, the, the, the dudes who take steroids and live at home with their mum and their age in their 50s or whatever, if you're paying attention to these people, if these people have emotional real estate in your head, all right, you're not living hard enough. You're not training enough, you're not going to bed early enough, you're not using the internet wisely enough, right? If you can focus on the downers at work, you're not work you're not doing your job properly. You're not working hard enough for what you're meant to do. Right? Simple as that. So if you can if you can focus on the the, the drain bows in life, then you're not focused enough on the rainbows and being a rainbow, right? If you're focusing on the on the rocks, you're not focusing enough on being a lighthouse in life. Simple as that, right? We all have been there. We're all focused on the rocks and the little trolls and the drain bows instead of Lighthouse, rainbow, getting it fucking done, all right? So that's, that's a reminder. If you, can, if you can acknowledge haters, if they take up space in your head, then you simply aren't doing what you're here to do in life. Think about that. If you're getting annoyed at your, what something your mum says or you're hanging on to that or what your dad said or they did something did to you when you were 15 or, or whatever, you're still living that when you're 30. Or so, come on, man. Let's get on with the show. Fucking hell, eh? It's as simple as that. It's not what happens to you in your life. It's how you do it that counts. Now, a lot, a lot of people will be triggered by that. Oh, no, no, no. This, you know, this is my identity. Don't take that away from me. This is my excuse. This is my ticket out. If you're around people who are going to be victims, then just distance yourself from these people. These people will drag you down, all right? It'll be like crab in the pot, pull you back in. Lastly, lastly, there's, there's one icon out there, an absolute icon on social media. Her name's Trisha Paytas. Her diet's the worst thing ever, bad for the environment, bad for health. Trisha's gift to the world, though, her gift to the world is she's a fucking boss. A fucking boss when it comes to dealing with trolls or whatever. Trisha Paytas, go watch her. Just type in Trisha Paytas. She, she purposely makes herself look bad. She purposely... You know, she just chooses the worst line, the eh, bad angles, and just 
just thrives on getting the trolls or no, 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 no. So Trisha Paytas is an icon, absolute fucking icon. You know, it's, oh man, I can't say enough for her in terms of like being absolute boss emotionally, you know. Imagine if she was actually on the nutrition plan. Imagine she's doing doing writer's diet. Fire out. Just something's going on in her head in a, a very, very good way about how resilient she is as a human and how she just thrives, thrives on the troll game. Right? So definitely I take big leaps from Trisha Paytas. I see myself and her in a lot of parallels. And I think she'd be, a, you know, she'd be an amazing girlfriend in terms of just like, just her, her skin is fucking armoured. All right, she can open up, but the the troll stuff is just like hits an armor plate, and she's like, eh. as long as you're clicking and, and leaving a comment, that's also the main thing. Trisha Paytas, an absolute boss on mastering social interactions, 100%. Look her up, man. She is an absolute freak show in a good way.